I now have all of them finished, including four little variable ones like this. Uh, because you need 30 all together and there's only 26 letters to the alphabet. Now I just wanted to show you what part of my plan is when I put mine together. If you have a kid or your husband and uh, their name is four to five letters long, you can take advantage of the alphabet and do one block with like my son is P-A-U-L and then my other daughter is C-H-R-I-S, and then my other daughter is J-E-N, I need to make another N-Y, and that would be for theirs. But see, I would put one letter of, on each of the, on each of the blocks, and then, of course, I would have to add other letters, like one here and one here, to give me my six letters, and then do the same here, one here and one here. And I just go all the way across. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'm, looks like, well, yeah, once I get my other end here, I'll have enough because then I'll have six to do this cube, six to do this cube. And you see, I got one letter of, from each of their names in each cube. That way, when th they play with them or an older sibling plays with them, they can look for the letters to their names and add their names to it too. Now you can do more than just one name to a block. You could add your, the grandmother's name. You could add the name of their city. You could add the name of their best friend. And that way it's a learning experience as well as a, a, as a toy. Now the next thing I'm gonna to have to find out is how well they machine wash because if you give them to a six-year-old and they're setting up holding on to them, you know they're gonna slobber all over them. You know they're gonna chew on them. And uh, you definitely wanna make sure they're cleanable. So I'm going to get one made and I'm going to put it in a gentle cycle on my washer, but not in the dryer and see what they look like when they come out. I'm going to add that to this video. But to start with, I just wanted to show you what I planned on doing with the letters. Like I said, I need to make another N because her name is Jennifer, but unfortunately Jennifer can't fit across, but Jenny can. And, and I got three that are pink, so I'll make sure that I add, well, see, they're all on a different one will be on this one, one pink one will be here, one pink one will be there. You can rearrange to change them up to make sure each of them has uh, multiple colors on them, not a whole series of one color. Like here I've got P and C and they're both the same color, but I'll make sure I don't put them side by side. And then I, I made some very basic geometrics and I don't have them in my pattern thing yet. I'm gonna to have to add those, but if you go to stitchniche.com, which is here, and you search under alphabet block, this pattern will come up right here. Unfortunately, I do not have the, um, let's see, I've got these, which are solid block ones, but I decided I wanted to make some different ones. So you can make any kind of a solid block you like. But if you look at this, you can see how the letters are done. Like, let's grab the M. I'm showing that I have a black background and any dash line that is this color, which is the M color, it's a dark pink, white, which is his eye, right? No, white is the actual moon itself. And the orange is his eye. And the light orange, well, that's it. There's only four colors on this one, pink, black, white, and orange. And you'd follow this graph. Each one of these little Transaction, transitions is one of the um, openings on your block. I'm going to get into how to make them in just a minute. I just wanted to show you what they look like. And some of them are really simple and straightforward, like the M and N, but some of them take a little bit more work. Like the ice cream cone has two, four, six colors in it. The elephant has six. Uh, the fish has, looks like six, um, but each of them are color coded. So when you see this color, you know it is the orange. And when you see the reddish color, you know it's a different shade of orange. Oh, that's all the same shade of orange. The blue is actually a light orange. And then this golden color is, yellow, uh, is the yellow. But this is the pattern that you will get when you go to stitchniche.com, I put it on for $2. There's 19 pages. And also there's a page on, here I say you need three 
three sheets, 11 by 13 and a half. You may need three and a half. I have to double check, but I think you might need three and a half. And I use a size 16 tapestry needle, but you could also use an 18, which is a little smaller. And these are the different colors I did. Now you don't have to do the colors I did. And then I show a chart on how to do all the cutting and how to do the stitching and the sewing together. I try to make it as straightforward as possible. I will show how to do some of these things here on it. Now like this one, this E, I do not like this pink against the pink ear. I think I would have rather done this in another color, maybe brown, because I don't have any um, light brown, so I might do that. And then some of the others, like here, I was talking about the other day, this should have been more of a royal blue, royal blue, that way you could really see the rocket ship. And I don't know if I like this black against this blue for the umbrella part. And I would like to do a darker pink here, because I found a darker pink when I did the W for the watermelon. See, I found this real bright pink in my stash. That would have been a perfect pink to put on the umbrella. So you can rearrange the colors. You can rearrange this, the um, stitch count too. Like I'm gonna redo this one, definitely. I'm gonna make the H bigger. I'm gonna make the heart a little bit smaller. And I've got a few others that I really don't like the way they turned out. I wanna adjust them a bit like the S. Where's the S? Yeah, the S. The S is really caught up in the sun. And I really don't think I like it caught up in the sun. I might shrink the sun down a little bit. And then the yo-yo, same thing. I think I'd like to have this thread, you know, the string, one space further down so it's not touching the Y. So I will be making a few adjustments. And when I do that, I will resend out a copy of the pattern to anybody that purchased one. I'm going to keep everybody's email address on a list. So as I make the corrections, you will get them just as quick as I make them. I think I like to make the cup maybe one a vertical line shorter, narrower. I just think uh, it would look a little bit nicer. But uh, next I'm going to show you how I start sewing it together. I just wanted to get this part done so you can see what all the all the alphabet letters look like. Okay, now I have them marked. I marked each one going this way. Now when you go to cut them, you want to cut this underneath that bar and cut it all the way across to stay as close to the line as possible with your scissors. One done. Now let's do the next one. All plastic canvas comes in sheets and when you get your pattern, your pattern will tell you where to cut. I found using a Sharpie helps with marking. Now after you get all these done, then you have to trim off the nubs. Let's get this piece of paper out of the way. And that's waste, we don't need it anymore. Now, let's cut the nubs off. See, you got all these nubs here? We wanna cut them off. Now they will go everywhere if you're not careful. So if you go a little bit slow, they'll fall on the table or in the can, right below where you're cutting your little nubbies off. See, they all stay here. I'll work, I'll jump, run, rub them off the table into uh, my trash can in just a minute. I just want to get all these cut. One more to do. And there's all my little nubs. I'll just push them aside for now. Okay, so now we want to do the same thing. We want to count 21 bars. Go this way. That way we'll have our squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 20. Now another way you can do this, which might be quicker, is take one of your other pieces. Let me enlarge this. Set this the side of your line that you just did and do it on the just past uh, your uh, template 
Okay, so they're all lined up here. There. Now what I do with this one is I turn it into a template first. I just cut out just one of each one of these. So now I use that as a template here. I'll enlarge this so it might make it a little easier to see. Okay, you see our little our little dash line? You want to line this up. So where your little dash line is, you mark in oh. Okay, it's actually this one. And this one okay so now we we'll, we'll mark all of them this way that way they're all marked ahead so it'll make it a lot quicker and easier to cut apart because you don't have to keep counting the same things over and over again I try to find the quickest easiest way to do something there. So now they're all marked. So at this point, we just cut them out, cut them apart. Because you've already got your little mark there. Oh. Same thing, you cut on either side of your little red mark or blue mark or black mark whatever color of Sharpie pen you decide to use. Okay, and then when you get to these, same thing, you cut the little nubbies off. So now you got a nice square, which is the same size as this. I'm not gonna cut them all apart because I don't really need them until I get ready to make another set of blocks. You just keep trimming the pieces off. Okay. And that's how you prepare your plastic canvas to um, do your little squares. Since I have to make another end for the name Jenny, I decided I'm gonna do it in some different colors. So instead of the N in green, I'm going to do the in, I believe, in yellow. No, yeah, yellow. Of course, I'm going to do the nine in navy, but I'm going to do the background in this really deep rose purpley color, magenta kind of like. So you can mix and match and change your colors around all you like. And um, I'll show you how these, how I count these. I can always enlarge it a little bit too. Okay, we'll start with the N. I always, for some reason, like to start with the um, alphabet letter. I usually cut a piece two and a half, two to, between two and three feet long. You don't really want it much longer than that because when you make it longer than that, then it um, starts to fray and get thin and you don't want it to get thin. So let's put it on our needle. There's multiple ways to start. Um, I like to, let me move this off to the side. I like to start with a knot, a waist knot and come up like this. If you look at my video I did on how to do count across it, you'll see this starting point. So I make a little waist knot, and it's the second roll of intersections. So this is the roll I'm gonna put the end on. So I'm gonna put it down kind of low from the front, and the knot holds it in place. So then I wanna put it one over and one down. So one over and one down, so that puts it right here. Now, when you're doing uh, the continental stitch, you always go from the bottom to the top, so the back has a long line of yarn, and it helps kind of hide or fill in where the yarn in the front kind of leaves gaps. And you come up to this one, and then you go down to this one, come up to this one, go down to this one. And when you're going across, you start here, and you go down to this one, and you come up into this one here, and then down into that one, up into this one and down into this one. You always want to make sure the line in the back is long. Because if you can, 
you can see how well filled in it is. You can you kind of see it here, but it really fills in the gaps. So if for any reason your um, thread starts to thin or fray because you made it too long, the back yarn will kind of hide the spots in the front that showing are showing gaps. So we got to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we come go up and then we go down to this one and we're going to trap our waist yarn inside of our loop though our stitches that we're doing so now we're going to go up we're going to go down and we're going to go up and then we're going to go down and I said we had to do seven of these. There's four. Five. Now we don't pull these tight. You want to pull it till it stops and then release it. So it'll, it'll relax a little bit. So I think that's six. Oops. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, there's six. And if you look to the back, let me get that out of the way. The thread is caught inside here. So then when you trim off this excess, it's caught inside your work. That, and you always wanna catch it inside. The first one you always have to kind of do it this way. After that, you can always catch your yarn inside a previous roll of the same color, which makes it kind of nice. Okay, so now we're gonna go back up. We're going to skip one, two, three, and go into the fourth one, and we're going to go to the top. So, one, two, three. There's one, two, three. Go to the fourth one. Nope. Let's see what. Two, four, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I've only done six. No wonder it didn't count out right. Let me add one more. Never hurts to double check. Okay, one, two, three, four. So we're going to go to the top of this one because when we're going up, we got have to go down. And you go up. And you go down. We got one more to do. Okay, so that gives us this one. Now this one, we're gonna go down one because we're not gonna start at this one. We're gonna go down one intersection and we're gonna do three going this way. So we'll go to the second one. Now in the beginning, it's gonna be kind of uh, like, where did I start? Did I do it right? If you don't do this and you do what they call a half cross, you that that works too. It doesn't matter which one you're most comfortable with. Now I gotta do three more. So same thing, we wanna go down one from the previous one. So if we go here, we're gonna line up with the first one. So we wanna go down one, so we line up with the second one. Oops, see I've already went in that hole, so I pulled it out. So we have to go to the, up here. One, so now we can go down. So we can go up to go down again. As you see, you always want it to make an angle on the back whenever possible. If you can't, well, that's okay. Now we gotta go down one more and then go up and make it line up with this one. So we have to do seven. So we'll start here. Cause see this one lines up with this one. the thread has a tendency to get caught. It's not uncommon, just loosen it up and pull it away from your work and then you can pull it through your work. But it's very easy to catch on these corners because they're nice and pointy, they're not um, rounded. Okay, I'm just about done. One more stitch. right there. Okay, so now I've got my end. To finish it, you go back through the stitches you just did.
and trim it. Okay, now your end is done. So you caught these when you started it and then you slid this one through after you finished it. And so now we have our end. So both of our ends match. Now we're gonna do our nine and we decided to do our nine in the royal. It's gonna take more than just one, two, three foot piece. So I'll just take a piece off. Doesn't matter how long your piece is, you can always add more. Then you have to decide where you're gonna begin and how you're gonna to, to work it. You wanna try not to have any yarns stretching distances across because if you do that then you got to try to hide them in your work and not let them show in the front so you can either start here and do these and then come around and then do these or you can start here and do these and come around and do these or start here and go around like this it doesn't matter how you start it it's how you think it will work the best with the way your project's going i want to start right here so it's even with the second leg of this end with a space in between before you start the blue. And there's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so it's not this one here. See, we gotta go up one. So it's not this one, so we're gonna go up one. And then we're gonna go over one because we wanna have that empty Um, stitch in between. Now you can either do like I did before and put the waist knot on and if you forget the waist knot you can always hold the yarn behind your work with your finger which will do the same thing. So we're going to, I'll do it that way for this time. And we have to do one, two, three, four, five. Okay there's one. Got to make sure I get that tail caught. I'm holding it with my finger. Since we're going up, we start at the top and then go down. Start at the top and go down. And as you see, as I'm doing this, I'm catching the blue yarn inside my work. So you can do it either way with a waist knot or you can do it like I just did here and it's got to do five of them so we got to do one more that's five. Oh, see I did it in the wrong spot I was supposed to go down not up so let's take them out you just peel them out one one stitch at a time take your time doing it I'm going to leave this first one in because I know the first one is correct. Instead, I'll bring the tail down and I do five going down. So there's the first one. Now we're going to catch the tail going down. There's two. three, four, five. Okay, so now we got this one correct. So I have one to line up with this one and one lines up with this one. So here we got one lines up with this one and one lines up with this, this one. So we're correct. Now the next one, we're going to go up. So to go up, we got to go down one and then go even with the rest and then one above. So instead of starting it here, which would make it even here, we want to start on this one. So it's one down. So we'll go here. Since I got a little bit of tail yarn left, I'll go ahead and catch it. And then we go up. This does take some time. It can take anywhere from a half an hour to 45 minutes to make each block, depending on how complicated it is, how many colors you have, um, 
how fast you are at putting your needle through, how slow you are putting the needle through. It's, there's many factors. How many mistakes you make and have to take out, I do plenty. Now, if you make a mistake and a whole lot, which I haven't done for a while, but if you do take your sharp scissors and go up through your work and cut it and go all the way up to the top, and then you can pull your stitches out. Okay, I got the second one done. Now the third row is one higher and one lower. So once you have your stitch count, you really don't have to count these unless you want to. I just know I have to go one above where my last one was to one below where my last one started. And then I have to decide where I'm gonna go from here. If I was thinking, I would have went up, down, up, and then I could have went this way. But since I did this, 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 I might have to do this. Or I can run the thread up inside uh, behind the work here and then come across, which I think I'll probably do, because I'd rather go ahead and go across the top, then I can catch these and continue on down. But if you think it through, you can see which direction would go the fastest or the best. And I got, uh, looks like three more stitches. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was slowly slipping down off the screen. Okay, now I'm one below. So this is actually up to this point here. So what I'm going to do is, like I said, I'm going to take mine back up to this point. So I go behind my work and run this yarn up through the back about two thirds of the way. Because you want to try never to have a tail going across. Because when you do that, it can, when you go to do another color, like say it's a lighter color, that darker color may show through and you don't want it to show through. Okay, now I want to do three. One, two, three. So I, since they want three going across here, I'm going to do three this direction. Okay, so I got those three. Now it wants me to do three more and three more. Okay. So I'm up at the top, so I want to do three going down. The whole thing is just going up and down and up and down, filling in as many stitches as you need. It's similar to count across stitch because you don't have a pre-stamped pattern. You do have to count and you have to be careful because if you get off and don't realize it till you get halfway around, then all of a sudden your stitches don't line up. You either have to fudge it or cut the stitches out and start again. It's whatever you decide is the best way to go. Three, one more. Okay, so that gives me my three here. See, one, two, three. Now, and this time I wanna do four. I wanna do one lower and then three even. So I'm at the top, so we're gonna start up at the top again. Okay, there's my four. That gives me these. Now I wanna do this one. So I can uh, stretch it up here or I can um, go behind my work. I think since I'm going behind my own same color, I'm just gonna do that. So I've got this little longer piece right here. But see, this is gonna be inside your work so I'm not too concerned about it getting caught or caught on anything. So now I want to go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's see. Maybe I should do that and think over here. That might be smart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's do those eight. So you just decide which direction you want to go.
as long as you get all the stitches where they're supposed to be, it doesn't really matter how you get them there, just so long as you get them there. See, since this is kind of long, these stitches are getting a little bit frayed and thin. You can kind of see right here, there's a little gap and a little gap. Sometimes you have to be careful you don't pull it too tight. If you make it a little bit loose, it'll kind of fill in the gap a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six. I need two more. Seven, eight. Okay, I got the eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now I want to do two here. One, two, and now you're going to do two more, but go down one. So I'm going to go down here and do two. Now to look at the re the other ones, they're the same, they're even. Oh, looks like I got two left. Now what I like to do is go back up here and then come down here and then I'll do this. So once I get this in here, I'm going to run my yarn through the backs of these stitches. And I'm going to finish this. So I hand it here and I'm going to do, I need one, two, three, four, five more. And to see if you're pretty close to where you are, you are where you're supposed to be after you do your last one. See how many intersections you have left. I got two, and there's two here. So now I'm going to do this. Go down one, and then go up four. So I'm going to go here. So there's one. Two. Three, four, and then continue across until I get to here. And once I finish this, I will run my thread through the back of my work to come up to finish these last two. As you see, I went ahead and finished to the end of the nine, which is looks like that. So now I'm going to run my thread back through. Now, since it's just about done, I'm going to run it through and to finish it. So run it through oh, about four, five, six stitches. And then trim it off. Okay, and that one's done. Now we're going to add a new piece of thread and we will continue the rest of the nine. I don't need a whole lot, so I got maybe 18 inches here. You can always save the extra pieces if your piece is extra long. You might be able to take advantage of it later on. Okay, so now I gotta decide which one I'm gonna go. Am I gonna come down and go up or I'm gonna go up and come down? I think I'll go up because there's an extra empty spot there. So I think I'll go this direction because it's a little closer that way. So you go back through your work. This is where I said you go back through your own colors to start. You go through the where you someplace that's close by and you catch it inside your work, so now it, you don't have to do your waist tail. Okay, so we're gonna go up one, and we're gonna be down one. So instead of having this one go here to match, this one match here, we're gonna go up one more and come up to this one instead. And if you look at your work, you can see you've got three in a perfect line, and here you got three in a perfect line, so you know you're correct. Sometimes you don't need to count, it's just visual. Now the rest of it will all be done 
in uh, that. This case, instead of light pink, it's going to be done in that magenta color. But I'm going to take this all the way up and come up one short, just to be one short. Okay, so I'm stopping one short here. And you can see it looks here like you've got here, it looks like a little box. There you got the little box, you know you're correct. Now here we're gonna do the same thing here. So instead of starting here and going up, we're gonna go down one and come back up. And we're gonna do this all the way to within two of the, uh, two of the end. Just about there. Looks like I may have just two left to do. Okay, let's look and see. We have one, two, and then it. And then we, here we have one, two, and then the stitch. Okay, that's the last one. So now we want to finish it off. Like we did the last time, go through the back of the work and trim it off. So you got that part. Now the rest is all solid. Be solid magenta. Now it's going to take a lot of time to do all this, so I'm just going to jump ahead and finish that. So that way you'll see it finished instead of uh, watching me do the same thing over and over again. Because you do the same thing like you do here. You'll go down, up, and then what I would do is I come across here and go in the end and then come down this way and do all these. And then either come here and finish these, and then finish these, and then go in here and finish these. Or after I come to this point, do these, do these, and then do these. It's entirely up to you which ones you want to do first, which ones you want to do second. As long as you get them all filled in, so it'll look like that. It'll just be all solid around your work. Uh, what I like to, after I do this, I'm going to show you how to connect them together. So we'll take it one step at a time. Next, we need to prep our colors. We know we're going to use four sheets of this plastic canvas. And it says to um, what it, use seven count plastic canvas, which I have. And the pattern is measured by bars, not by holes. So using the scissors and a craft knife, cut to size, trim any little plastic nubs off. So as you can see, trim right along the edge. And this is done with 21. It's, it says it's on here, I forgot where, but you want to count up 21 bars. So let's count 21. I'm going to mark it with a pen. It's easier that way. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I think that's correct. Let me put a little mark here because this is where I'm going to cut it. Let me double check my count. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Okay, so that's correct right there. Now we count up another 21. I like to get them all marked, and then when I go to count, it's a lot quicker to count. I mean, cut. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Once you have all of your six squares ready to make your cube with, uh, I wanted to show you how I usually put them together. You pick a color that you want to be your border. Now you can use any color you want for your border. You can make each square a different color border, or you can make all the squares with the same color border. It's entirely up to you. Of course, you need your tapestry needle, your jingle bell, and you may need a pair of pliers when you get near the end, and I'll explain that as we get there. Now, the first thing we want to do is sew this together 
like this. And then when they fold up, they'll fold up into a cute little cube. So we'll just take it one step at a time. First, I need to get myself some thread. Same thing, you don't want to get more than two to three feet because it will get thin and fray and then your blocks don't have a nice smooth look. I don't have a finished block to show you at this point in time. So the first one here will be the one uh, which will be your one to show. I can't even talk now. Okay, now if you want, you can catch, go through this. Now what I do is when I go through, I just go through a top layer, like just one ply, because I don't want that blue to show on the front, unless that color I'm putting in is actually blue. Okay, so that kind of holds, locks it in place. Now we know this is going to go here. So put them together. And you start sewing your corners. Now, I don't go through this here because you're going to go through this corner several times. And you're going to have so much thread in there, it's not going to be able to go through. So instead, I'm going to go over one. It will. All these little squares are going to get used up. And just keep going through each of them one by one. It's called a whip stitch. You don't have to pull it super tight. If I can just hold the needle in my hand. Go till I get to the end. Okay, there. All right, so what I'm going to do is stop with that one because I want this one and this one to go together through that last hole. This way, instead of going through these two like I would have if I was finishing it, but since I'm not finished it, I want to go through these instead. And same thing, go to the next one because you still got two more blocks to whip stitch through those holes. When you start, it's really easy because the pieces will lay flat for you, but as you get working on it and sewing it into the shape of a cube, it's gonna take a little bit more dexterity and patience. So it's nice to have this part to do first. And I'm just about out of thread. I'll go ahead and, since I can take it to the end, I'll go ahead and take it to the end. Okay, I'm going to come one short on purpose. Go inside. And put it back through the back of the blue thread. As long as you can use the same color, it's always good to do that. And this is what, it's nice to have a pair of pliers to grab the tip and pull it through. I've got two sewn together. Now this one will go here and this one will go here. And then we'll sew this last one on separately. Let's get another chunk of thread or yarn. I, should, I don't know why I'm calling it thread. I should be calling it yarn. Go back up through the blue again. Now what I do is I hold on to where the other blue came out because you don't want to accidentally pull that other blue thread back through. Okay. Now come back up through the hole. There we are. Now I'm ready to connect this one to it. So we'll go into this hole.
Hmm. No, I really shouldn't have done that hole. I should have done this one over here instead. Okay, now I can go through the second hole with both of them. Just takes a little manipulation. Take your time and see where you're at. Sometimes you may have to change your direction. And we'll do that last one. Now another way you can do it, instead of doing it this way, you can sew all four up this way and sew them together and form your block. I'll go ahead and get this one on because I've, that's the way I started it. Sometimes it's hard to see where you want to be. Just take your time and it'll all work out. Another way is to sew all just four pieces together and form a cube and then just sew the top on all four sides. I can show you that real quick also. I'm hoping I can get all the way to the end with this one piece of thread. I hate to have to start a piece just to do two or three stitches. Looks like I'm going to have enough. There. And then I'll pull it from the bottom. There. Okay. Now we trim this one. Now if you had done, pretend like these aren't on here. You pretend you sewed this one on. What I'm going to do is just kind of catch it with a piece of thread for now, just so you can see. I'm going to trim this off. I just want to do this to show you. If I can get a hold of it. My fingers aren't cooperating tonight. Okay. So say you just did all four of these instead. Then you fold them up like this. And sew all, sew them together, form your cube. And then you can sew the top piece on, then turn it over and sew the bottom piece on. But before you do your last one, you wanna drop your jingle bell in. It's entirely up to you which way you want to do it. I like to do it this way, because then I can fold this up and go here, across the top here like this, and then that way. Of course, I'm not going to put this one here because I don't want two whites together. I'm going to, well, it looks like I'm going to have two whites together because I didn't really pay attention, because there's no way I can not have the whites touch. So they're going to touch, but I don't think the baby will notice it. It'll just be tickled that they got one. I should have made it so where I had white and a white like this. That way there'd be other colors in between. I'm going to go ahead and get this one sewn on. Now this time I'm going to carry the thread across the top of my work since it's white on white. I can get underneath that blue. Sometimes you have to do it this way 
because the pieces don't cooperate. But as you see, it does the same thing. It catches the thread inside. Trim off this extra because I'm going to need that little bit of space to weave my tail the, back through the other direction. I just have to get my spaces lined up because you don't want to put two threads in the same space. Now, since I'm right here, I'm going to bring this over and sew these two together. Hopefully I gave myself a long enough tail to do this. But see, you can squish these. It won't break them. You can squish them to be able to hold them together. Getting close to the end. Just make sure you're a little bit more aware of what colors you're putting where. Okay. Now I'm back to this corner here. As you can see, I've got some empty plastic, which I can take advantage of it to get all my corners sewn together. Do that one. And I can go this way into this one. No, I'll go into this one. And then I can go back. Um, and uh, of course, now I gotta rethread my needle. Try to give yourself a tad more thread if you can. Put it down inside. Because this is where the fun begins when you, your tail is too short. I think maybe what I should have done, I don't even know where my tail is now. I don't know which one my tail is. Let's see. Can't really turn the block inside out, unfortunately. Let me see if I can thread this through. There. Bring it back to the front. Okay. I'll just do the same thing that I did before. Let me get back where I'm supposed to be. I pulled it loose again. Instead, just go through on the front side. And that's when that pliers are really coming handy. There. Okay, that one's done. Now I can do these two together. Just make sure I give myself a long enough piece this time. Uh-oh, I just lost my needle. Oh, there it is. Look there, I was able to find it. Now you can sew the block together whichever way works best for you. I'm not saying this is the way it has to be done. I'm gonna pull this through here like a waist knot to help kind of hold it in place while I sew this together. Okay, I need to catch this corner. There. Oh, I missed a spot. Looky there. Let me put it back this way. There, that'll do. Now my corner's done. So you just ad lib it whichever way you can to make it work. Because they are your blocks.
Now, if you feel these blocks are too big, you can always make them smaller and readjust the picture size or just do the alphabet letters and don't do a picture. Get the tail out of the way. Now I can continue working. Oops, I went too far that time. Okay, now that one goes this direction. Just hold it carefully. I like leaving it kind of laying on the table because the table gives you a little bit more support. It holds one side while your hand holds the other side. Let me pull it up this way a little bit so it'll be a little easier for you to see. I know I still got the other side to sew together, but like I said, you can sew it together whichever way is easiest for you. Now as I work on it, if the thread starts to twist up, I turn the needle a couple of rotations and then the thread will lay flat again for you. Once it starts twisting on itself again, then you can always turn it again in your fingers and that'll help. There we go. And the same thing, run it through your work. There we go, there we got that one done. Now we still have this to do. So I think what I do is I run up this and come around this way. Or maybe I'll do these two, and I'll do these two. It seems like whenever I pull my thread, I pull just enough to do two sides. So in that case, I wanna make sure I do two sides that are close together. So I'll do this, then I'll do that. Or I can do that and this, it doesn't matter, whichever two you wanna do next. But it seems like when I pull thread, I pull off oh, about four feet which gives me enough to do these. Same thing, I'm gonna put my yarn here. I can put a tail on it, you know, a knot to help hold it in place. Then I can trim the knot off. Get inside. You just wanna make sure you catch it. I want to make sure I catch my corners. There, yeah, so it kind of makes your corners a little bit more um, filled in with thread. Now, same thing, you want to make sure you catch this. Inside your squares. Whichever works best is how you're going to do it. Now I'm just about to this tail, so I'm going to trim the tail off, or the little knot off. There.
once you get the hang of it, it goes pretty quick. This is not the only drawback of working with plastic canvas. When you make something that's three-dimensional, it has to be sewn together. And usually the hardest to sew together is the very last one. Because here I can keep my hands on the inside if necessary, but when you get to the last one, you can't put your hands on the inside. Looks like this time I cut, pulled four feet out and I might be able to do three sides. enough I'll go ahead and sew this side too Just about done with this side, then all I have left is the end to do before I drop the jingle bell in. You can put any alphabet letters you want on each of your blocks. If you want to make them be able to spell out words, you have to take your time and decide which letters are going to go where. It'll be kind of like one of those word search puzzles. And then when you're done, you Get your thread up, weave it through. Okay, now all I have left is one side. So let me get myself another piece of thread. I'd rather have one a little bit too long than to come up a little short. Same thing. I'm going to put a little tail here. Help hold it in place until I'm ready for it. There we are. I just make sure I get that blue tail. And before I finish off, I want to make sure I drop that jingle bell in. It's not tight. See how loose it is? Take your needle and pull each loop to make it tight. There, now I can finish it up. But same thing, you wanna make sure you pull them snug. Let me get my jingle bell in before I forget it. A few more stitches and this one will be done. And then just repeat this same process with your other four blocks. And once you have your other four blocks done, then you can give it away as a gift or set it up on a shelf and flip them around to change the words. You can say happy days if you want. You can say good morning if you want, or good morn. I don't think you can get morning because morning is more than five letters. Now, if you make more blocks, then you can definitely spell out the word morning. I'm trying to get through those stitches. These I did a little extra tight. But the pliers definitely give us a hand. There we go, all done. 
Now block number one is done. So I have the P for my son, Paul, or if I'm doing my daughter, Chris, then I start with this side. And, and if I'm gonna do Jen, I'd start with that side. And then I'd build my blocks across with each of their letters. But that's how the blocks are made. I hope you enjoy the video. Now there are some corrections I'm gonna make on my pattern. And as soon as I get them made, I will get it out there to everybody. And then I will also change it to the corrected pattern on the YouTube link as well as stitchniche.com. And then I, once I get stitchniche.com done, then I will put it on ravelry.com. So thank you for watching and um, click notification so you know the next time I do one. Also share with your friends and definitely subscribe. We want to make these videos keep coming. Thank you for watching.